Well, hi, and welcome to Jim's Radio Shop, where we're going to be looking at how to connect this shadow meter that I've been working on, and I think I've got it in working shape, uh, into the radio here. And I've done a fair bit of thinking, studying, and observation on this. And I'm hoping it's going to come to me rather suddenly here and fully, just exactly where to connect it. Now, this radio has been altered. The shadow meter broke probably, who knows, could have been 40 years ago when the radio was in use. 40 and could it be 50? 50 years ago? And the uh, service repair guy just took it out of the service, out of the circuit, because he knew what was involved in repairing it, which I now know too. It's a lot of work, and if you are running a regular repair shop business and trying to feed your family, you can't afford to spend hours and hours and hours on something, on a repair whose value is just not going to be there. Back then, that's for sure. Now, it's a different story, because this is now a, uh, an antique radio, and it has value uh, because of its oldness and its value is elevated if it's functional. So uh, I think it, there is value in, in putting a pretty, pretty good effort into repairing one of these guys, which is what I've done. Let's just, before I say too much, let's see if we can get it working right in the radio. Though. So I, I need to find See, it's in this line here. See, the series in this line. I need to find this line here. Now, this line splits and goes to this 44 and to this 44 too. So I need to get behind the slit to split. And uh, so I have to find this wire. So we go back here, assuming it is a wire. Well, we can go all the way back to uh, what well, looks like a field coil. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. Or we maybe we can find our way back to this uh, choke coil here in the power supply. Thanks. I don't like any of those. <laughs> Uh, the choke coil uh, looks like 58 to me, so take a quick look and see what 58 is. 58 filter choke. So, and 58 has two of these guys in here. So the right one is this one. So, so, so I might be able to find this spot, but that's too soon. I gotta get it. I gotta get it over here. I gotta get it past this wire. I gotta get it in here somewhere. Okay, given all that stuff, Can't even see the wires coming out of this choke. I 
How's that supposed to work? What is this? Hmm. What's going on here? I don't think there's any wires coming out of this thing. What? Must be right there. Where's the other one? Right there. There it is. Okay. Don't fiddle too much there, Jim. So there's one wire. Here's the other wire down into here. Coming out of that choke. Okay, and that's far away from where we really want to go. One end's coming into here. Connecting to this big. Oh my gosh. Sorry about that. Okay, so two wires coming from the choke, one going into this resistor spot here. <laughs> the other side of this resistor. So what are the chances this is the wire right here? Can this be the wire? This is essentially would be coming up off the choke. There's a terminal down there. A two contact terminal sitting there. One wire comes out of the out of here. The other wire continues on up through this joint and into the schmozzle up here. This resistor, which I measured at 200 ohms. This looks to me like the replacement for the uh, <clears throat> for the shadow meter. If I take this off, put the shadow meter connection here. I think I'm. I think I'm. Uh, I mean, that all makes a fair bit of sense, except for this. Except for this cut wire here. Not sure why somebody would cut this wire. Let's see if this binding post shows up. Plan here. Okay, so the binding post is 
right in here. This this right in here. Or maybe maybe this piece is it right here. Thirty-four. Okay, that's numbered. Thirty-four. So what's thirty-four? Condenser, second IF secondary. And they got the wrong number. So there's a component. There's a component right there that's missing. A couple of components here. They don't seem to exist. Or even more has been done to this set. You know what? <clears throat> you know, well, when I look at this now, my ever-growing knowledge, <clears throat> and I see capacitors like this one, this one, this one, all connected on top of these blocks. Now that tells me that somebody abandoned the capacitors in the blocks and put these in as alternates. Who knows what else was done? That resistor is certainly not showing up. So I think our move here is uh, remove this resistor. Explore the circuit that results, or lack of circuit. Check this resistor for value. And that's got to be the terminal spot. That makes a lot of sense. It's in the right position. It's got the right kind of wires going to it. So uh, I think that's our spot. I think that's our spot. been a little suspicious of all along. So I, I think now with the experience I have, I could look in the back of one of these radios and see these blocks and see these extra capacitors and recognize right away what has happened in here. Um, and these are all probably very good capacitors in good shape. So we'll pull this guy off. See what we can see from that. I need a pretty hot solder now, so heat her up more. Yeah, so somebody's come along and they've replaced. Let's see. This goes from ground to the center center capacitor here. This is the outside capacitor here and the outside capacitor here. Now that's interesting too. If we look down here. We see the power cord coming in and connecting to one of these blocks. So that's got to be the uh, filter capacitor for the power line, which I've been reading up and uh, improving my knowledge around it, and uh, hmm, we probably shouldn't leave that like that. Um, it's set up in a way that as soon as I plug this radio in, those capacitors are energized, and they always are as long as the radio is plugged in. It's only 120 volts, but that's a lot of uh, service time. And secondly, if they do fail, they're contained in that block. You know, if you get a power fault in that block, and if your fuse on your uh, house circuit is slow for some reason, maybe the fault is uh, 
you know, an arcing fault, it's not quite enough current. It wouldn't take long to turn that into quite a conflagration and maybe even a little explosion there. So that's pretty easy to fix. We can do that. I understand that you can take these blocks apart and repack them. I haven't, I haven't looked into that yet. You know, throw, throw some new capacitors inside. But, uh, I have not looked into doing that. Again, that's a little more of a restoration thing than a uh, repair thing. And, uh, Just as I thought, it's just tacked on. Now whoever did the repair might have picked this uh, resistor because the leads are just right. It may not be so much because of the size of like the uh, value of it. Maybe more just because the, the leads were right. Okay, so there she is. It's like extracting a tooth from somebody. Uh, not being paid dentist rates, that's for sure. Okay, so let's see what we got on this guy here. I think it should be around 2,000 to, be, to match the circuit. Yeah, it's 230. 230 ohms. 230 ohms. I would consider that small considering what I know about the circuit so far. But you know what, this is right in the range of the uh, resistance of the coil. The coil is just a little higher if I remember right. Let's see, 230. 150. Okay, it's low, it's 150. 150 on the coil. Two thirty on the resistor. Two thousand is what I think it should be. Hmm. Well the safest thing to do is to put uh, you know put a thousand ohm resistor in series with the uh, series with it. A little bit of current involved here. Brown, black, red. So there's a thousand ohms, and that's not a very high wattage resistor, but it's, it's not tiny. It's good for testing, anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tack that guy in there. But first, I'm going to attach one of these wires to one lead. thinking hard about souping up my entire video system here that I'm using to make these videos because I'm taking a very labor-intensive approach to it right now. A lot of awkwardness in it. My uh, 
tablet camera is not the best camera and I can't control the file size and all kinds of background video type problems that I'm trying to deal with. I think I need to revamp the whole thing. And where is it to, to uh, improve my videos? Here. Come on, just just sit there, would you? Sorry, iron's plenty hot now. <coughs> Is there a directional thing on this? I don't think so. I think if I put it one way, the vein turns one way. If I put it the other, it turns the other. I don't think it makes any difference in its operation. That's where I'm at on that. What if I've got this totally wrong? Well, I don't think so. I mean, uh, let's see. I'm just re-establishing continuity that was already there through the resistor, except through the coil. There's no reason to think there was too high a current in there, although it was a pretty big resistor. I'm going to start the radio up on current limiting. I'm going to watch that watch the meter operate. If the current is too high, I don't think it can mechanically damage the uh, meter. Um, I think the, the movement will just swing. I mean, I've been swinging it with a magnet in there really hard, so the coil itself can heat up. Uh, that would take a bit of time. I can monitor it with my thermal gun, which is in the back seat of my car at the moment. As I was checking my mother's stove with it, if you can believe that. She was convinced the heating elements weren't heating up on one side, you know, the stove elements. She convinced herself. So I brought my thermal gun up and, hmm, no, everything was normal. But I left it in the car, so I had to run out and get that. Yeah, so I think if I renew my video system here, I can get a better camera. I actually have a better camera. But I haven't been able to use it. Oh, come on, I just pulled it off a little too soon. I just need to tack this right now. Okay. So we're going to stop for a moment. I'm going to run out get my thermal gun and then we're going to test this guy. Okay, we're ready to uh, to test the uh, shadow meter. So I have it wired into the set. I'm ready to turn it on. And what we should see is the vein 
should rotate uh, in, into this angle. Any amount will make me happy at this point. And that's what we should see. So I'm going to bring on the radio and current limiting. So we won't get the full force of the current, but we'll probably get probably get 90% of that. That's my guess. We'll get pretty much all that's available. And we'll, we'll see what happens here. So let me do a quick safety check here. Hmm, we don't have a speaker connected. That's not going to work. That's not going to work for us since I think the current flowing in the shadow meter is also flowing through the field coil of the speaker. So we have to plug in the speakers. Okay, so I'll bring them over. the plug-in. I don't like doing this over and over. For all I know, this is on its last legs here. I don't know. This, if, if the meter starts working in any way proper, I should be able to tune this radio and actually see if there's a safety check here. All looks well. I think I have a, I have a cover for that. Okay, we'll plug it in. Yeah. Okay, now we want to check um, power switch is on, I believe. Okay, we all set. Here we go. Okay, we're armed. Not dangerous yet. <laughs> There we go. Watch this meter. Okay. Tubes are warming up. I see a deflection. Yep. some sound from the radio. Pretty surprising if that's getting hot at all. Okay, a thousand ohm resistor, which is a good uh, model actually for heating. There's nothing happening there at all. Very good. And I, I can't imagine there's any heating effect in here. A little hard to get at it. It's all in that box there, but... I think it's seeing my, my hand. Yeah. There's nothing at all. Nothing at all. Now that's not much movement. Let's bring the radio up to full power. More movement. Very good. Let's now uh, tune the radio.
she works. It's a little bit microscopically, but I'll just turn down the radio a bit. There's movement. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. But it's extraordinarily weak. So, that's good. Let's, uh, Why don't we pump a real strong signal into there and just, just give it a real good chuck. I'll turn on my signal generator. Clip the lead onto the antenna. I could probably just go on a grid here, but we're somewhere mid band. See if I hit it here. There it goes. So there you are. Microscopic movement of it. Hey, let's let's do something. What if we put another magnet in there? See a little more motion now. So that's telling me more magnetism will help. Doing some funny things there, isn't it? Okay, well, it looks like I managed to demagnetize it again. But I think I also revealed that the magnet is the issue with this thing. So I really need to work on that magnet. And maybe some other alternatives for boosting it up. I can't see how to extract it without pulling out these little pins. That looks like a disaster to me. They're riveted in. How would I ever get that back in there properly? So, I may have to pop that out in the end. But weak magnetism is the, uh, appears to be the key.
So I just can't present the mag magnetism right where it really needs to go. Shut off the set at this point, I think. I think that's... Yeah, look at that. Doesn't take much to, to mess it up. Switch off. And I'm going to unplug it. Just for double safety. Okay, so we got good news and we got bad news at this point. And the good news is it works. The bad news is it's terribly insensitive. And I'm having a really hard time dealing with what I think is a lack of magnetism in that. In this guy here. There's just nothing. Tiny amount. As compared to this. Yeah, I think that's kind of what you want to see. So that's the challenge. I have to think about this for a little bit and decide how I want to pursue it. I think I may set this aside for a little bit. I have another couple projects I really need to make some progress on. So maybe I'll set this aside, let it stew in my head for a while. Maybe uh, I'll get some good ideas from uh, some of you viewers what to try at this point but largely I've been successful which is really great because uh, I put a lot of effort into this and I certainly don't want to give up now and if it comes down to it I'll have to pull that magnet out I can always glue it back in you know that that's probably what's gonna happen but I'm gonna ponder it before I make another step because every step of the way there's a chance of ruining this thing and I'm gonna thank you very much for uh, watching and uh, stay tuned or what I try next on this.